Let's begin in Florence, where I went to search for a Florentine letter set to write my patrons, quality cooking chocolate, and to immerse myself in the Christmas spirit with una passeggiata tra i vicoli e le piazze. The first recipe is Ricciarelli, a light and fragrant gluten-free cookie from the 14th century that is said to have first been brought to Italy by the knight Ricciardetto della Gerardesca on returning from the Crusades to his castle near Volterra. The recipe has been made for centuries in Siena, just near here in Tuscany, and is usually made at Christmas time, the secret being to make the biscuit batter and then let it rest for at least 24 hours, resulting in a sweet cookie that is light but chewy and scented with orange and vanilla. So let's start by zesting a whole orange, which by the way, the green grocer in, in a market in Florence gave me for free. It's just a little gesture, but it really made me happy all afternoon. This is me having a little moment of reluctance to take off the lovely leaves. After a lot of research, I wrote my own recipe and I'm so excited with the result. They're just perfect if I do say so myself and really simple to make. So I set these books up uh, to give me some height to position the, the ingredients but actually I, I found it so lovely cooking with books around me. They're musty pages, they're fragile covers, they give me this sense of history and calm. I bought these from an old bookseller in a market when I lived in Rome. This one is called A Woman in Search of Love. Anyway, back to the recipe. So I start with vanilla bean paste. The zest of a whole orange. Then we want some lemon juice. By the way, these beautiful teacups and saucers you see were sent to me by a very kind Canadian patron named Sean, who shares my love of all things vintage. Thank you again, Sean. Now we want two egg whites.
I love adding Fior de Rancho, orange blossom water. To me, it just makes the recipe sound more like a fairy tale spell. In these biscuits, the orange and almond are the protagonists, but the cinnamon will give the flavor a little warmth. And now we whisk it all together and just inhale that dreamy fragrance. Now add the caster sugar. and the almond meal or almond flour, and bring it all together to form a compact dough. Our dough must now be left to get its beauty sleep for 24 hours. The next recipe is one my sister made. Shannon is a naturopath and nutritionist, and we are all big chocolate lovers in our family, but sometimes you may want to cut down the refined sugar you're having or even just make a sweet that is a little better for children. These chocolate balls are so yummy and very, very easy. Uh, they're vegan, gluten-free, sugar-free, but they do require a powerful blender or food processor. Shannon always recommends soaking the almonds overnight to activate them, which makes them more digestible and helps us absorb their minerals. All the decadence of chocolate can easily be recreated without refined sugar or cream. We'll use rich dark cacao for that intense flavor, chopped dates for sweetness and that fudgy texture, coconut oil and tahini for creaminess and to bind everything together some sea salt which serves to enhance the sweetness and suppress bitterness, and finally the almonds which give a creaminess. In order to show you this in one shot, I added everything to the blender at once. However, normally it's best to blend your almonds first so things don't get clogged. You don't want the almonds as fine as almond flour. Leave some of them a little bit coarse. A bit of crunchy texture is good in these balls because every other ingredient is soft. Once blended, just roll them into balls. Uh, I recommend using gloves for this to keep uh, things from getting messy and chill in the fridge for a little bit and coat with cacao, nuts or coconut. Of course, dates are still high in natural sugar, but compared to most Christmas sweets with refined sugar and cream and gluten, uh, these are a slightly more virtuous choice. Good morning. Uh, oggi facciamo la versione meno sana, uh, più golosa. Today we're going to make the, the less healthy version of uh, chocolate truffles, a little bit more greedy, a little bit more yummy uh, because we're using chocolate. Uh, so I don't know, I've just, I've been so happy this morning, all morning, just sort of pottering around, uh, gathering flowers and, and, and ingredients and, and candles and everything. And I just, it's my favorite. Uh, type of baking because you know we're, we're we're creating a box of chocolates but it's like a box of, of jewels you know we're just gonna, sort of going to adorn them and make them really exquisite so that it's more than just a candy bar in a in a wrapper it's it's just something that feels um, decadent and 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 beautiful. So we're going to start with the, the ganache the filling which is basically just chocolate and cream uh, if. I mean, I went a bit crazy in Florence yesterday and got this beautiful chocolate from Venki. They're, they've, um, they're a wonderful historic chocolate shop in Florence. I mean, look at this. Ah, it's just, it's just like, it's like a bar of gold. It's so heavy. I'm going to do a mix of milk and dark chocolate for the ganache, and then uh, I might just use dark chocolate on the outer uh, coating when I dip them. Um, but inside with the ganache, I thought I might split up the filling and, and try different flavors. Um, 
So one flavor I thought I would do would be to infuse it with Vin Santo. Vin Santo is a dessert wine uh, here in Tuscany and usually they have it after a meal and you dip cantucci in it or you know biscotti biscuits hard biscuits and it softens it up in the in the sweet wine and this is just lovely and I think it will go really well with chocolate. Uh, another version I want to do is a spiced version of course for Christmas. Powdered ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg. What else do I have? Oh yes! Café. I have some coffee here. So there are two ways that you can make your ganache. You can either melt the chocolate um, over in a, in a bowl over a simmering pot of water, not boiling, just simmering, and then pour in the cream and, 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 and whisk it up. Or you can boil your cream and then pour the hot cream over your chocolate to melt it. I think I'm going to do it the first way, uh, also because I like to add uh, a little bit of burro, butter, and this makes your, your truffle center really creamy. And uh, so I'm going to just in a, in a bowl put uh, the chocolate and the butter, uh, sort of melt that down, not completely melted, but almost melted, and then add my cream afterwards. And we add our cream, which is just at room temperature because I <laughs> took me so long to set up. So <gasps> did you see that happen? You see, it, it looked like it wasn't was sort of going to separate or wasn't going to come together, and then it does. Ah, oh, gorgeous. See that is just velvety smooth. Look at that. I just can you see it? Can you see it? Okay. On to the next recipe. Do you remember our wonderful dough from yesterday? Well now, all the flavors have infused. It smells like, like orange and, and vanilla. So, <laughs> mm, there's like sweet, sweet clouds. <laughs> I can taste the sugar in the air. Okay, so, uh, be generous with your Zucchero velo, your icing sugar, and we want to roll this into a log. You see this brooch? It's from my grandmother, my Greek grandmother, who unfortunately is no longer with us, but when she was alive, she was just like a best friend to me. I would call her up and talk to her about love and philosophy and uh, everything really, and also cooking. She, she along with my mother, taught me to cook. Actually, I'll put a little photo. This is me making um, my, my birthday cake with grandma one year. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's just, oh, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. Allora, so we want to try and get it even. Oh no, I haven't got a knife. Anyway, I suppose I'll have to change the camera angle so that you can see it closer. Do you realize every single time there's a cut that I'm getting up, washing my hands, drying them, moving the tripod, <laughs> changing the lighting? Um, but I love it because when I used to love it before, when I was putting out these videos and really getting nothing, getting like 1,500, 2,000 views or something. And, um, and I still loved it then for years when <laughs> there was just no one really here watching. A couple of you, a few of you who followed me from TV shows um, on to, to, to YouTube. But, uh, but essentially it just took me a long time to get going and uh, who knows why. But the point is we're here now and 
all I can say is it's it's such a privilege um, to make exactly what I feel in my heart and then to find that there are people like you out there who who appreciate what's in my heart. It's really, I don't know, I feel, again, I already said this last, the last episode of the episode before that, but I really do feel like I'm working in Santa's, Santa Claus's workshop. And then we just want to, after they're like this, then we just want to shape them into, oh, ciao, bentornato, ciao amore. Someone's just come home. Hello. Ciao. How is everybody? <laughs> You're just in time. Oh, I had original Ricciarelli. No. Because I was, Oggi. Yes, because I was near Siena. Amore, no, no, that's come... a test. Oggi. Yes. Dopo pranzo. Yes. <laughs> no, so I can tell you. What pressure? What pressure? I, you know, now I, I have the test because it's uh, something that comes from Siena. So. Sì, ma erano fatti in casa, were they homemade? Non lo so, era una scatolina di plastica. Allora, basta. Sembrava una mm. pasticceria. Mm. Pasticceria, yeah, exactly. They weren't made by someone lovingly at home. I don't know how much they were loving uh, who, who made them. <laughs> they were not, it's impossible. They were delicious. <laughs> they were under <under> pressure. <laughs> Look at this. Amore, guarda. Guarda quanto sono belli. Cioè, there's only one at the moment. But look at my log. It's am amazing. And look at the balls. Le palline le avevo già viste. Sì. Uh, what else? Oh, yes. And then I have um, ganache um, truffle mixture in the fridge. So if you want to be involved in rolling some chocolate truffle balls... What ganache? Uh, what did you say? <laughs> it's got Vinsanto in it. Ma non potrebbe essere forno, no? 